Right guys, I'm just walking down to the beach to test the XP ORX white high frequency coil on the wet sand and dry sand. And when I get down there, I'm going to give you the top five scumbags with a metal detector. This is an interesting one. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be part of the chat. I have at last found a great setting on the ORX for the beach. Easily switchable between the sand dry, the sand wet. Really easy to switch with one button. So much so that I've stopped all that noisy interference and squeaks and I've just got my first object which looks like a knife blade from maybe somebody's picnic or something. Even though it's on salt mode, let's just go have a look on the dry sand. Well, the first target was just an old bottle top. What else would you expect on a beach? Here we go. Anyway, it's time for top scumbag number one out of five, David Wernham, also known once upon a time as Metal Detecting Scotland. Let me tell you all about it. Seven years in jail for a Gulf War veteran who raped a vulnerable 13-year-old girl and took explicit images of attack. David Wernham preyed on the 13-year-old girl, having claimed he was taking her out metal detecting. The 51-year-old was snared when police later discovered hundreds of explicit images of the victim. A judge told how Wernham of Helensborough, Argyle and Butte was identified from his tattoos and yesterday he returned from the High Court in Glasgow having pled guilty to rape and indecent images charges. The offences took place between July 2015 and February 2016. Lord Beckett told Wernham, whose family has now shunned him, that he had sexually exploited the girl in crimes that involved depravity, adding there is no alternative to a lengthy prison sentence. Wernham, who also uses the name Collins, will be supervised for a further three years after his release. The teenage victim was described as having learning difficulties and was not able to consent to sex. Wernham lavished gifts on the girl, including toys, teddy bears and trainers. He got to know her after they met at a charity shop which he managed and the ordeal only came to light when she told a relative of being abused. Werner will be on the sex offenders list indefinitely. Scumbag. Well that wasn't too deep and it ended up being a 20 pence. So first coin in the day on my third signal. Not bad. So right, let's move on to scumbag number two in the top five of scumbags with a metal detector. And this one is Roy Wood, a delivery driver. Oh yes, scumbag number two. Gold Roman coin theft. Delivery man used metal detector to steal historically important artefact. The British Museum contacted the police after they suspected the culprit had the coin. A delivery driver from Essex had admitted to using a metal detector to steal a gold coin from a private estate in Norfolk. Roy Wood, 52, from Grays in Essex, pleaded guilty at a Basilan Crown Court on Monday using the equipment to find a gold Roman coin at Castle Acre in Norfolk. I was actually born less than 20 miles away from there. The coin, worth £200, dates back to the period of Emperor Valentinian, who reigned from 364 to 375 AD. He was considered probably the last of the greatest Western Roman emperors. To make his finding, Mr. Wood nighthawked a process which involves a person using a metal detector on private property without permission. The rest of this whole story is available for you to read using the link down below in the video description. Now this one took a long time to get out of the hole. I'm on the dry sand, it's a bit damp underneath, but underneath that is thick heavy clay and rocks and boulders, all like that. But I've got it out of the hole, I think. And, oh, <laughs> it's a two pence. 
Well, it's a coin. And it's one of the older ones, which means it's got a copper core, rather than like the new ones, which have got an iron core. So let's move on to number three scumbags in the top five, and that's David Cockle, a Norfolk policeman who stole thousands. This is a story of David Cockle, the policeman who stole ancient coins he found with a metal detector. This policeman found 10 ancient gold coins and he has been jailed for 16 months simply because he failed to declare them. He found them in a field in West Norfolk and sold them to a dealer for £15,000. He had entered into an agreement a contractual agreement with the landowner to split the proceeds of any fines 50-50 but he failed to tell the landowner of his discovery. He also failed to tell the coroner. Instead, selling the coins in three smaller batches to disguise the fact they were treasure trove and another metal detectorist who found 35 of the same coins had declared them honestly. Had Cockle done the same, the discovery would have been the largest hoard of those particular coins in the UK. If you want to read more of this story of the crooked cockhead copper, then by all means see the video description. And now an old pound coin that went out of circulation just a few months ago, but the banks and the post offices still take them and give you change. And a new penny. It was in the clay under the sand again. I tell you what, it's been a great time here by the sea. At least I'm finding a few things. It's better than I usually do on the beach. Anyway, let's move on to number four. Now, every metal detectorist, that is, every honest metal detectorist, can't stand night hawkers. And this is a report on the BBC website. Now this one is not really aimed at an individual as like the previous scumbags. This one is about a group of scumbags. We all know them as Nighthawkers, the illegal metal detectorists. This was first aired on the BBC's Inside Out programme on March the 3rd, 2003. But it has a happy ending. Meet Mike Rutland. Mike is a metal detectorist, of course he is. And his patience finally paid off when he uncovered a very rare Bronze Age gold bracelet at Milton Keynes. He says these are the first bracelets of their kind to be discovered in this country and have been valued by the British Museum at an amazing £290,000. Wouldn't we all like to find that? Anyway, this one is dedicated to all Nighthawks. We hate you and you are the scumbags in our hobby. And I'll leave the link to this full story, a pleasant one, in the video description. Scumbag. But it's not possible to tell what that is or was. But that piece of lead was definitely something. It will always remain a mystery, I guess. Another 20 pence in the dry sand, but I'm very close now to the wet sand. And now for number five scumbags out of five, and that is, you can't get more scumbag than this. One of us lot, one of our fellow detectorists, was held up at gunpoint, a gun to his head, and his detectors stolen. Let's watch while the news tells us all about it. The thief accused of taking a Denison man's shovel and metal detector at gunpoint back in March now has been arrested for the crime. The man accused of that theft. News 12's Abby Maynard talked to the victim to get his reaction to the news. Who robs somebody for a metal detector? You know what I mean? He's, he's like some, some kid trying to steal another kid's toy. You know what I mean? Like Ryan Crowley says he was out metal detecting near Perry Avenue and Elm Street in Denison back in March. Then I was in the zone, too. I just found, like, everything I was finding was 1800 But all of a sudden, he looked up, and a man he had never seen before approached him. Where's the coins? Where's the coins? That's all he kept saying. Pocket full of coins and money. 
You know what I mean? Crowley says the man then held a gun to his head and stole his $10 shovel and his beloved $400 metal detector. At, at the time, it felt like he was kidnapping one of my kids. You know what I mean? I love that thing. You know, I find so much silver with it. But now, a little more than two months later, a man is behind bars for the crime. And I was so happy, man. I ain't gonna lie, I cried, you know. Kellen Fidari was arrested Thursday for aggravated robbery. I just want to thank Venison Police. You know what I mean? Because they really. They helped me get my life back, you know, but uh. The district attorney was unavailable to interview, but the arrest warrant states that authorities were able to track the suspect vehicle's license plate to Fidari's address. Crowley then looked at a photo lineup and picked Fidari as the man responsible. I would have taught him how to metal detect, too. I would have showed him, you know, but he wants to rob people. He's going to have a lot of time to think about it in prison, though, so. Fidari has bonded out of jail. In Denison, Abby Maynard, News 12. Yes, indeed. What a scumbag. And now for a bonus number six, and that is Nazi memorabilia being robbed from wartime graves. Who would do such a despicable thing? Well, this story comes from The Express, a British newspaper, entitled Grave Robbing Ghouls Who Trade in Nazi Relics. This particular story is about Russian men who walk slowly through the woodland of the Caracas region where 150,000 German soldiers were buried at the end of the Second World War. They walk along skimming their detectors over undisturbed ground and then comes a frenzy of activity as they find what appears to be a mass grave and they all start digging. This disgusting trade is evidence of a global boom in Nazi memorabilia which appears to be expanding across the whole country and indeed the world as the horrors of the war recede into history and the adverse economic climate increases an appetite for material assets. This is nothing but pure and simple grave robbing, says Peter Gerhardt of the German Association for informing relatives of fallen soldiers. It is believed that even one of our most popular UK metal detectorists has been a part of this grave robbing activity for German relics. Whether that's true or not depends on what you read. To refer to the rest of this story, see the link in the video description so you can read the whole article for yourself. Scumbag. And just before I go, if you remember that copper penny I found three weeks ago, maybe four, look what I've done with it. If you want to buy one just like this, check out my Axis store. The link is in the video description. And now for the bit you've all been waiting for, and that's the coin hat giveaway. Did you enter last week? Now, if you did, and you're a subscriber, this might be your lucky day. Let's do the draw now and see who's won for last week's video. Yes, so if you entered last week on the video, this one, which is the top five murder weapons, then you could be lucky this week. All you need to do is just leave a comment in the appropriate section, including the hashtag coin hat giveaway. And you could be lucky, like this one is going to be. Now, who is it going to be? If you entered, I hope it's really you. And RP Detector, thank you, pal. I've seen your name pop up a lot. I know you're a great supporter of the channel and an important part of my community. So I'll be happy to send that to you. Just leave your address and I'll get back to you. Well, congratulations, mate. And thank you so much for your support, for subscribing and for supporting my channel in general. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be part of the chat.